Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD in the previous video. Well, we saved our buddy Makar and he played a awesome song and the great Deku Tree gave us a another Goddess Pearl. I don't really see how- oh, I think it's over here that we see that. Yep, there it is. The second Goddess Pearl. It's like you look at it. It's for Rui's Pearl. And yes, now that that has been completed, don't need to take my sword out. <laughs> Let's actually talk to Makar really quickly. I want to see his dialogue. Thank you, Link, for all that you've done for me. How's my performance? Did it suit your tastes? Oh no. This instrument is the one the Great Deku Tree gave to me on the day of my birth. He said it is an instrument that people played long, long ago. Huh. A little bit of foreshadowing. Kind of cool flavor text. And eight of my fellow Kuroks have set out on their journey to create new forests in the world. Yeah, speaking of those Kuroks, we're actually going to run into them in this episode because we're going to be doing a ton of side quests. Since, well, technically we don't know what our objective is, but if you go talk to the King of Red Lions, he'll just tell you. What it is we gotta do, but I don't want to do that right now because I want heart pieces and sea charts and etc. And we probably won't be getting a bottle for quite a long, long time, so don't really worry about the bottle. Anyways, oh, come on. No, Beetle, come back the other way. <laughs> I kind of wish Beetle would pay attention to me, but I guess I can just go see him off screen and get some bait and stuff. Because I kind of want to level up his membership card. Good evening! Letters for Link. We got one. Yeah. This mailbox, pretty much, no matter what you do, is going to start changing and it's from actually the chieftain of the Rito tribe and he's basically telling us how thankful he is to Link that he helped out his son and basically his entire tribe and for our deeds he'll give us a piece of heart. Very nice. And yes now we need to walk up to the King of Red Lions who should talk to me. Okay there we go. <laughs> so this place too has been attacked by Ganon. He had already gained his power. Link you must get the remaining power. It lies in the place northwest of here. We must sail immediately. Yeah, we could sail immediately, or we could dork around all day. Which, personally, I feel like dorking around all day. So, what we're going to do is we're not going to go over here. We're actually going to go one over and check out our map. And this is how the map works in this thing. I'm going to be referring to actual locations. The, well, horizontal part of it is going to be labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That is just going to be helpful in case you want to find any of these islands for yourself. The first island that we're going to be heading to is actually F7, directly east of, well, the Forest Haven. The place we were just at. That place over there. <laughs> and it is this island. There is a treasure chart that we're going to be getting here. And we're also going to meet a Kurok, although we can't really do too much with him yet. Well, we could technically do something, but it'd be kind of hard. So we're going to be saving that for later. And let's cruise a little bit before this giant shark guy decides to attack me. What is that glowing thing? Oh, it's just a tingle bottle, which I don't really care for. And apparently they decided to put a mailbox all the way out here. Not too sure why that's sitting there, but it's not really that important. What is important, however, is this island. This is Plateau Island. And most islands in this game have sea charts, heart pieces, or other things to do. That's what makes the island exploring so stinking cool, because almost every single one has something cool to do in it. Every, like, square of the Great Sea has something for you to grab. So, we're going to be doing some of that, and we're going to get some rupees here, so that's pretty nice. I would have liked to spend a couple of those rupees at Beetle's shop, but he was not in an area that was nice to get. Now, that chest has a joy pendant in it. I'm not going to be getting it. The joy pendants are not very helpful. And I'm basically just going to beat this island, which you don't really beat the islands. You basically just explore them. I'm going to try and explore it as quickly as possible and get the sea chart and then get out. So you're seeing that there's... Oh, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Did not want to get inside the uh, Boca Bud immediately, but we are going to grab one of those. What you need to do is you need to get a stick, light it on fire, and then go inside the Bud. Yes, you can actually have this fiery stick whilst in the Bud. It's kind of funny. kind of alarmed me the first time. I was like, what? That should light it on fire? Because I was a little stupid little kid. Anyways, chuck it. And there, get your Deku Leaf out. Wait, is there anything else I need to do? Well, technically, you could drop down there and get that chest, but as I said, it only contains a Joy Pennant. Get your Deku Leaf out, do a little glide, and there you go. That's pretty much the end of Plateau Island. I think there are a couple other things to do here. There is technically uh, there's an outpost somewhere. I can't see it right now, but hey, here's one of the Kuroks that Makar was talking about. Hello, Swordsman. I've seen you in a while. How have you been? It's like last episode. What are you talking about? I've come here to plant the great Deku tree and see. Look, usually the forest trees sprout quite vigorously whenever you plant them, but for some reason this one has withered. I'd be willing to bet that these trees are my fellow Kuroks that planted are withering away as well. Yeah, it's basically another side quest. We're going to be getting that a little bit later. I just wanted to bring it up and maybe some water from the forest haven would help. 
Yes, it would. We're basically going to do this once we have four bottles and blah, blah, blah. Please help me. I'd love to help you, man, but we got more pressing matters. Bleh, sorry. But yeah, right up here is actually what we are searching for. It is going to be... Well, I already spoiled it, so chances are you already stink. I know what it is. But it is actually a treasure chart. Yeah, we're getting all 52 of them. Hopefully I haven't missed any too important. And right here is actually the rarest two in the game. This is the first instance, well, I guess, no, technically you go to other islands in different orders. This is Blue Chew! Blue Chew is actually pretty helpful, and we want to collect as many as we can, because we can basically turn it into a very useful item back at Windfall, which we definitely want to do at some point. Now, is there anything else to do here? No, it doesn't really look like it. I'm going to get inside of the King of Red Lion. I want to try and drop directly on him. You think I can do it? You think I can do it? Oh, I did it! Yeah! <laughs> awesome. So now that we have that uh, treasure chart, we actually need to start sailing again. Now, I believe we have to go kind of down, and I just realized I'm not really going anywhere, am I? Oh my gosh. Now we're heading to G7, which should be one down, so we're going directly south. And yep, that is where we're headed. Okay. Next, we're looking for a submarine, which could... The submarines kind of move, it seems like, sometimes, so I don't know. I believe... Oh, yeah, that was the outpost I was talking about. We could do that, but it's not really that interesting. I may do that later on in the Let's Play, but for the time being, I know exactly what I want to complete in this episode. We're actually going to be getting um, a lot of heart pieces, actually. We're going to be getting a lot of stuff, so we definitely want to do that. This is Five Star Island, because if you actually feed the uh, treasure... Actually, not the treasure. The map fish, some bait. It, it looks like five stars because of those little pillars. But that is not what we're here to do because there's really not much to do on those pillars. We're looking for a submarine, so we've got to keep our eyes peeled. Even though I think I saw it. It's kind of stormy around here. Let's actually check my map. Oh, I think I'm actually directly in front of it. So apparently checking my map was actually very good luck. Yeah, maybe not. Anyways, we're going to cruise up to here really briefly and get out of the boot. And this is probably, uh, it's not actually hard. I kind of want, wait, is my grappling hook already equipped? Good, I think it is. Awesome. Something you can do before you even enter this place is there are bats, or actually keys, my bat, just hanging out on top. You can take them out immediately so you won't have to deal with them. There is one keys left, but it's whatever. And also we're going to bust out our gra- oh. <laughs> That didn't go as planned. We're going to bust out our grappling hook to snag some more joy pendants and defeat these Bakublins. We're very, very annoying. What's this guy doing? He's literally a moth drawn to a flame, apparently. <laughs> Get a second joy pendant. We need about 30, if I recall correctly. I could be wrong. Chances are I am wrong. But hey, that's just who I am. I'm never perfect. I gotta work it. G give me a joy pendant, thanks. Goodbye, you're dead. Preferably. Yeah, he'll probably die. Let's get a, another joy pendant. This is just basic. You can basically just come in here and repeat the same process. It's called based by grinding for joy pens. It doesn't really have a name. He has to feed all the enemies. Oh, this guy has a shield. Oh, goodness. You have to take that out. Actually, I kind of want to destroy this keys first. There we go. So that is all the enemies in the room, aside from this green Bakublin, which will now be defeated. And once that has been completed, a ladder is going to drop from apparently nowhere, even though it's kind of just on the ceiling. And this will give us a very nice treasure chest, which our health isn't really looking too great. You know what really alleviates that in Zelda games? You know what the issue of not having enough health is? Well, finding more. And I totally just spoiled what's going to happen. <laughs> it is a piece of heart, yes. We just need three. Actually, no, we need one more, which I think we will get in this ep I need to check my notes. <laughs> well, simultaneously running into... Uh, I don't know why these water bottles are... I guess just like... I don't... I don't... I don't We're going to be getting another piece of heart. And, oh, I actually didn't kill all the keys. I guess it's all the, you only have to destroy all the Bakublin, so. That's cool. Didn't know that, but those keys are pretty stinking annoying. Anyways, now that we're done here in Five Star Island, we're actually going to sail, uh, which way is... I think this is west. Let's hope. Yeah, that's west. Okay. So we're going to sail one block over to that... Oh, no, I want this. I want this chest. I want this chest. Can I get this chest? That'd actually be really cool. Oh, it went too far. I kind of can't hear it because my TV is a little low, but... Hey, that's just the price of being a Let's Player. I think this might work. Come on. Nope. Not close enough. So I need you to cruise a little bit. I desperately want this chest, because I can't... I, I can't... Guys, I have like a... Like an obsession. I just gotta get every chest, man. I got them. I need them. I gotta know what's inside of them. <laughs> and yes, if I recall correctly, it should be like a rupee chest. Can't imagine it's anything too useful. You know. 
Yeah, rupees. Nice. 50 rupees. Not too bad. I don't want to collect too many more rupees, though, because I want to find Beetle and stink and buy from him, darn it. And no, we're actually not going the right way anymore, so we need to go west to, I believe, the next um area is the boating course. And oh gosh, another treasure chest. <laughs> Someone please stop me. Oh, oh my gosh. I can't, I can't, I need it, I need it, I need it. Okay. Honestly, strategically, though, it'd probably be best if I came back here later and got these. Because, um, my, my wallet's almost full. Yeah, if this is a purple rupee, my wallet's full. Maybe I will honestly come back and get that. No, no, I, I need it. I really need it, guys. You know what? One more try, if I can't get it. Because I actually do not know where it was. Maybe right here. Nope, okay. Screw it. We're not do dealing with this anymore. So let's um, put that away and set sail again. So yeah, sorry. <laughs> My greed is almost unsatiated. But don't worry, guys. We won't probably be doing that too much more. The next area that we're heading to is actually... Well, dead ahead of us. It is, I think, Boating Course? It's not really Boating Course Island, but oh gosh, new enemies! These are like P-Hats fish brothers. They're really annoying. You can jump straight over them, though. Although we don't really have a way to defeat them at the moment. But we'll be getting that maybe the next episode. I don't want to say that, though. It might not happen. But soon, soon, guys, is when that is going to occur. Anyways, we are at the Boating Course. There's not really much to do here right now, though. Well, there is stuff to do here, but it's not really that important. Anyways, we're going to get out of our boat and climb up this island. Ugh, ugh. It's very steep, very steep. And look at this gentleman. He's like, eh, whatever. And I totally messed up. I could have made the King of Red Alliance actually point the other direction and have the wind automatically appear there. But I goofed a little bit. And we need it to go north for this next segment. Cause they're oh, gosh, look at that guy's face. He's just like, I don't care about the wind. Anyways. Deku Leaf, wind, boom, we are over here now. And what is in here? Oh, another hole. <laughs> now, this isn't uh, anything too helpful. It's just a treasure chart, and it's actually really stinking annoying to get. These imps, I know they ha that's not really their name, but that's what I have called them basically my whole life, so sorry about that if I can't remember. I, I think I said it in one of the episodes, like, correctly. I was, like, proud of myself. I was like, dang, I didn't even know I knew that. And I was like, wow, was the years. And, ugh, this part's annoying because these guys constantly respawn. And you essentially have to hit all three of these switches. Doesn't matter the time, really. They just got to get hit for a chest to appear. And hey, we just did it the second I was complaining about it. And now that the chest has appeared, uh, the imps will, I think, continue to respawn. So let's just deal with them really quickly and open up the chest. We didn't, I don't think we destroyed any of them. And go, oh, they just look so creepy, man. That is, that's a very good enemy design. They're just like these rats. And anyways, it is a submarine chart. Pretty handy. Now that we got that, we can get the crap out of here. <laughs> So yeah, that's technically in my book a treasure chart, but it doesn't necessarily give us treasure. It just shows where all these submarines are, which will be a little bit handy. It is technically 100%ing, so whatever, whatever, whatever. Now that we got that, though, uh, let's see. What else do we need to do? Let's actually check the map. Now that we're boating course, we need to head to E7. So I think, yeah, we just need to go over one block. West? Yeah, west is where we need to go. So... Oh no, this is basically what the qu the side questing is going to be like in um this game. I mean, I'm sorry if you guys don't like that necessarily, but I mean, I like it. It's actually a ton of fun. I don't know. It's just how I've been. The next area that we're heading to, though, is actually Angular Island, and I feel like I messed something up. Knowing me, it's probably just my OCD. I don't know. I'm probably fine. Anyways. Is that Angular Island? Yes, it does look like it. Angular Island, in my opinion, is probably one of the cooler island designs. It's literally just blocks. It reminds me of something out of Super Mario Sunshine. Probably that beach like bonus area. I like that area. Let's actually put our sail away and get out. Nope, nope. Be, 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 be. Now there's actually two islands on Angular Island. The one with the palm tree, it just gives you rupees if you go down there. Not something I necessarily want to do at this instant. However, the main portion of Angular Island is in fact a very cool side quest area. That will give us, uh, I think it's another treasure chart. Not too sure. I don't really want to look at my notes, though, and find out. Yes, I am using notes for this Let's Play. Because I did my homework. Honestly, though, Zelda is such a big game. Sometimes you got to write crap down. That's just the way I see it, though. We're going to push this block. Yes, more block pushing. Block pushing will always be a part of Zelda history. I don't know. It's just the way I see it. It's just like, 
It was in the first game. It was in the second game, but it was pretty much in every other game past then, so... You know, that's just how the games are. No, I think this is a heart piece. But yes, at the top of Angle Island is going to be a very spiky chest. Which will ha Oh, and another blue chew. I want you. Eh, die, 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 die. Yeah, we got two jelly. Nice. I always like collecting these guys. I think we might have missed one that we could have got. They, they do respawn in this area. It's not like it's just like one time thing. If they just appear and they're never seen again. So you could potentially farm them, but it's not honestly too required. And hey, we got another heart piece. It's very nice. So now we need to, um, hmm. you drop down here. I, oh, no, I didn't hit the deck really fast enough, man. I suck. All right, it's whatever. So now uh, the angular line is done. We need to go to G4, which is actually way up there. So hmm, we need to sail north a little bit. The red needle on the compass all the way down there does show you where north is. So do that. And it really is kind of hard to find these chests when you don't have any of the, um, the map filled out, but hey, it's just the price I pay. I'm probably gonna do that next. I said that I'm gonna do that next episode like ten times. Just do it then. Ugh. Okay. So after arguing with myself for a little while, where we're actually supposed to head is west. Yes, that's where we need to go. Ooh. Because um, we're basically gonna do a mini boss fight. If you do not have the boomerang at this point, which so I don't see how you couldn't get it, because you're gonna need it. This next island is actually um. It's not headstone, it's two eye riff or reef, not rift. That doesn't make any sense. This area is yeah, we're gonna be back here a couple times, I think. I think to no. Well, it depends how I decide to do it. But yeah. It's kinda of cool looking place. There's pirate ships though, we have cannonballs. Unfortunately we don't have a way to defeat them. But we need to be on the lookout for actually a pack of seagulls. I wanna see I think I need to go south a little bit. Now once we find these seagulls. How many boss fights gonna happen? Admittedly, a very easy one. But that's a boss fight, nevertheless. And I can't seem to find these seagulls. It's probably because it's just turning, you know, to night. It's kind of hard to find things at night sometimes. It's just the way the game is. And oh, I can't find it. Goodness, where's it at? Where are these seagulls at, man? Can you find these seagulls? Where art thou, seagulls? I will search for you till the day I die. There they are. Oh my goodness, I found them. <laughs> nice. So I had to do a little loop de loop and then pull. But now my shoes are looking cool. And now we found the seagulls. And what happens when we find the seagulls? Well, a giant kraken. What for? Out of the ocean. Oh, it's a big octo. Not a kraken necessarily. How do we beat this guy? Lock onto his eyeballs. Don't throw your boomerang at it. Mm. It's going to take, I believe, four hits. Now, you do not want to take your time here. You basically want to kill this thing as efficiently as you can. Because he's going to do, oh, uh, well. If you get in the center of him. As you can see, we're basically, like, keep swirling in more and more but something bad's gonna happen we're basically gonna get knocked away and not be where we are which is kind of bad I don't think I can why can't I lock onto that oh I think that one got hit twice this might actually end it yeah there we go all around pretty easy boss fight but it's not the last we're gonna see of this rare breed of octopi because <laughs> he's gonna come up multiple times basically yeah, that's how he works. Okay. But once he has been defeated, a very marvelous fairy is going to appear from his corpse, apparently. I don't know why. An awaker of the winds. Thanks to you, I have been freed from the beast's foul grasp. As thanks, I shall give you a little of my power. This is my favorite fairy design ever. It's just... I don't know. I can't really describe in design why I really like it. I can't tell. I don't know. It just looks really cool. It's symmetrical. And for freeing this great fairy, what magnificent power are we going to gain? We're going to get magic power times two. Woo! Which is pretty stinking cool, actually. <laughs> and yes, that is why we did that. Magic power, you can never have too much of it. It's pretty nice to grab, obviously. So now we are headed, I believe, yep, yeah, it should be just the next square over. We've done a lot of side quests. We got a treasure chart, a submarine, a piece of heart. We got the submarine chart. No, I need to use the fast sail. What am I doing? <laughs> so all in all, I think this has been a pretty productive episode. I'm going to get one last thing, and then I'm going to add the episode off. Oh, yeah, we also get that. Uh, Oh, no, there's two things we can get here. Yeah, this is a two area. Definitely want to do. Oh, so tempting. I want that. No, oh, bad. <laughs> but we're going to have to wait. And basically, I mean, once I get more treasure charts, I think is when I'm going to do treasure hunting. Because I actually have 468 rupees. That's actually a lot. Let's put our sail away, though. Because this specific area, which is Headstone Island, by the way. I didn't think I said that yet. 
This isn't Headstone Island, but it has a submarine on it in this specific square. And oh my goodness, this is the most frantic, annoying, stinking square <laughs> submarine ever. I don't like it. Essentially, we're thrown to an arena with a bunch of these mice. And I need to put this away. And you have a lot of things you can lock onto. Just try and lock onto the rats and nothing else. I'm doing a horrible job at that, mind you. Which isn't good. And they're going to try and light these uh, bomb flowers and just throw them at you. That's what they do. That's their whole thing. They're gonna light them. And admittedly, a kind of funny way. They just like slide them across the, <laughs> the um, oh gosh, the ground. And apparently, that is enough to ignite them. Got another red rupee. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? He's like coming. He's like trying to do like a leaping attack. Where's this guy? I need to destroy the last one. Where are you? Oh my gosh. So last rat is being quite troublesome. And he went back in the hole. Like, die, die. Okay. So now that he's been defeated. We can get what we came here for, which I believe is another treasure chart. So that's kind of cool. Spawns all the way out there once I climb those ladders. We'll have, um, I think one last thing to do. Yeah, we're going to get another piece of heart. Okay, some more rupees. So we're almost rupee, yeah, we're rupee cap now. So kind of a, are, are we? Oh, I guess we are. Darn. So I need to go spend some of those rupees. We're going to do that probably in between episodes. I'm going to basically go and use the, uh, the bait bag and spawn. Read some bait out to the map fishes. Probably on the southern portion of uh you know the Great Sea. If I'm gonna do that off screen. I know it's at that 20 times. Anyways, we got a C chart. Don't know what that C chart is for. We can actually actually let's open up some C charts before we go. We got one. I don't remember where that is. So we got number 14. I do remember that is, but don't want to spoil it. We got that one, which is actually a pretty cool island. 25. For some reason that. That looks like Dragon Roost, but something is telling me that it's not. It might be Windfall. I'm not sure. We still got the Tingle chart and the Submarine chart. Let's actually look at this one. These lists all these submarines in the game. We've already cleared a couple of these. Unfortunately, it doesn't exit out once we've done what needs to be done. The one that we're standing on right now is obviously what we just did. We actually did the one to get the bottle, which is kind of on the bottom. And we also did the one in the extreme southeast corner of the map. So, so far, three out of uh, seven submarines completed. Not bad. Not bad at all, but we still got to get all of them because there's some very nice things in those submarines. But, honestly, that's like an optional uh, treasure chart to get, but I decided to get it because I wanted it. Anyways, one last thing we're going to take care of in this side quest episode, to be honest with you, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back too hard, but we got a lot of goodies in this episode. Got, our health is actually looking really good despite me missing a piece of, or actually, a section of my hearts. <laughs> But we actually got a lot of them. I will not rest, though, till every heart piece has been completed. Because I am a completionist, and that's how I roll. Anyways. So this is actually Headstone Island, which is where the, the square's name so it actually appears. And can I really not fit through that? Okay, game. That's whatever. Let's actually put our sail away. And use the normal sail for a little bit and just cruise up to this quaint-looking island. I like this island a lot. It's just something, you know, that you wished was, like, in real life. You just stay here and... Watch the night sky with your loved one. Ooh. We're not actually doing that. Zow like girls. You got cooties. I'm just kidding. Anyways, use a hoi pair, which looks very... Look at look at the actual icon for the hoi pair. It's just like covered in like water. But what do these pairs do? They actually let us control seagulls. Why is that useful? Well, this one reason. There's also a couple other reasons. That's about it, though, so that's why Hawaii pairs are actually useful. But yes, a piece of heart is actually on top of this island. And once we get it, oh, we got a piece of heart. Collecting all four of these will give us another heart container. That is pretty much all of the side questing that I wanted to do in this episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. I know it's been a lot lengthier, but you know, that's how the side quests work in this game. We got a good chunk of them actually completed, which is really <laughs> Link, Link. Look to the audience. We're saying goodbye. I just want to pay attention. Anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching. In the next episode, maybe plot, maybe fish, map, stuff, more things, more Zelda. See you guys then.